Good morning, and welcome to Unity in the Olympics in Port Angeles, Washington. For those of you joining us today on Zoom, we ask that if you have not already done so, please turn off your microphone and your camera. For those of us here in the room, please take a moment to silence your cell phone. Thank you so much. And now, let the celebration begin. Good morning. I feel like I need Will's hat. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Good morning. I can make it that way. To have a good morning. All I have to say is it's a good morning when I see it that way. I woke up to cloudy skies, true, I didn't even want to open my eyes. I pulled the covers way up and over my head, cause I got an extra hour of sleep. I took a breath and realized I'm so lucky to be alive. And with a smile I popped right up and said, good morning, it's a beautiful day. Good morning, I can make it that way. To have a good morning, all I have to say is it's a good morning when I see it that way. When I wake up feeling good and everything goes just as it should, it's not hard to call it a wonderful day. But even when I'm feeling down, I can easily turn it around. I just have to stop myself and say, Oh, good morning, it's a beautiful day. Good morning, I can make it that way. To have a good morning, all I have to say is, It's a good morning when I see it that way. It's a good morning when I created that way. All right. Good morning. This is actually, this is my baritone ukulele. And I wrote that song on a ukulele. I actually didn't write it on the piano. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would share that with you that way. And welcome to November. Yay. Say that with me. November. What that means is we're going to try a few new things. You're going to see things, you're going to hear things that are just a little bit different than what we usually do around here. And some of it will stick and some of it won't. We won't know until we try them, right? So November becomes November. The first thing you probably noticed, and I've heard it already, the first thing that you probably noticed is your bulletin right? So uh, in, in a few things here. One is we can save a little paper, right? That's, that's never a bad thing, right? The other thing is because of last week's service being so like, huh, what are we going to do next? And it felt so alive with the energy because it wasn't so programmed. I said, you know what? What if we have more of an outline and less of a, a very specific thing? Rest assured, the celebration host and I kind of have an idea of what's going to go on. But if you follow this, <laughs> if you follow this, though, this actually is the order of service. The first thing we do is we gather, right? The second thing we do is we sing. We just did. And then we're going to talk about what we believe and we're going to bless and we're going to pray and we're going to receive a message and we're going to give and we're going to share. We're going to thank, we're going to envision peace and we're going to celebrate as we go out. So the service is still here, right? It's just the things that we do and how that morphs throughout the day, uh, throughout the morning. It just gives us a little bit of freedom to be in the moment, right? So there, that's my spiel for November. Um, let's go over to okay. Char. <laughs> Well, good morning, um, <laughs> and welcome to this beautiful day. You know, I know it's cloudy out there, but you know what? It's still beautiful. And, so, and, and to Unity in the Olympics in Port Angeles, Washington. For those of you joining us today on Zoom, we ask that you ha if you have not already done so, please turn off your microphone and your camera. For those of us here in the room, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. I turn mine off now when I come to service because it really frees me to just be here and mm. not worry about anything. And I'll turn it back on afterwards and get any phone calls that I have. So, all right, gathering suit, gathering song. 
Um, and we said who our people are. Did we mention that? No, we did that? already. Oh. Did I, did I miss that? Yeah. Was well, you did the song and then, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going on. Uh, we have audiovisual team is yes. Merlin Fisher. Did we say that? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh, okay. Yeah, I have that. Um, okay. And, um, and. Yeah. Back to, back to that. <laughs> <laughs> our ministry and music coordinator, B.A. Huffman, is sharing message and song today, as you know. And our audiovisual team is made up of Merlin Fisher and Bill Evans and our wonderful assistant who is in Missouri, Tim West, who's on Zoom for us. Charles Mawson is serving as our prayer chaplain today. And if you are seeking a prayer partner after the service, he will be to the right down the hallway. Oh, you're gonna, are you gonna stay in here? Or are you gonna go down to the prayer room? Whatever. Oh, you can just be there. We, yeah, you can just be there. Okay, we especially welcome those of you who are joining us online. You are, as we all are, in the right and perfect place in this right and perfect time. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to try it again. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time I'm just where I'm supposed to be Oh my soul is welcome here Oh my soul is welcome here I am getting the message loud and clear My soul is welcome here Oh my soul is welcome here Oh my soul is welcome here I am getting the message loud and clear soul is welcome here I am getting the message loud and clear my soul is welcome here yeah right place at right time mm. wonderful thank you wow energy flowing energy flowing <laughs> and so for me this is probably the beautifulest building at least the room uh, when I came here in 1990 and came into the room, wow, it just took my breath away. Mm. And then to hear the history of the people that actually built this, all hands on deck. You know, it was uh, when Richard Levy was here and he was like writ minister with a hammer in hand. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, what a beautiful place to be and such energy So because we've had such wonderful people be here. Uh, um, <laughs> Judith and her, her our group of people will come and, and bring their energy with them and it's just wonderful. So thank you all for being here in this beautiful room. The five basic principles of unity are not commandments or a set of rules, but rather a distilling of teachings and tools that are demonstrated by Jesus, Buddha, and many other enlightened beings with wonderful uh, wisdom traditions. We are we here at Unity find these principles to be most helpful in raising our consciousness, deepening our spiritual experience, and recognizing our oneness with the divine. If it resonates with you to do so, please join with me in saying aloud these five principles. There is only one divine source and creator of all, and no other enduring power. This source is absolute good and is present everywhere. Number two. We are spiritual beings with the very essence of divinity in us. Therefore, we are also inherently divine. Number three. Containing this divine essence, we are creators of our own life experiences through our, our own way, way of, of thinking. thinking. <clears throat> through positive prayer and, and meditation, we align, align our heart and, and mind our mind with, with source, source bringing manifesting forth wisdom, wisdom healing, healing, abundance, and everything good. Knowledge, Knowledge and recitation of these principles is not enough. enough. It is, it is through, through living and, and practicing them that, that they, they become, become our, our truth. truth. Yes. Mm. Wow. Wow. Thank you, B.A. Yes, the, so five, the five unity principles. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go on, I'm sure. noting that someone's, someone on Zoom has their microphone open. 
And if you could just turn that, super, okay, great. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And now let us bless the children. And this is, this is new, so I'm going to give you just a second to read through it so we can all say it together. We're going to bless our children in this place, here in our hearts, and throughout the world. So that beautiful, beautiful little baby that's a part of you still, mm -hmm. and also the ones who are living in this world, and those maybe who have gone on, uh, will say this for you. You are you smart. are smart. You, you are, are kind. kind, and you, you are important. important. We, we see the divine light inside you, and we love everything about you, just the way you are. Oh, beautiful! Mm. Absolutely beautiful. Mm. Thank you. That first part. Do you um, did, did you all see the movie The Help? Yeah. That's where that first part comes, right? You are smart. You are uh, kind and you are important. And boy, I sure would have loved to have heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. Thank you, Charles. Well, it's, it's so wonderful again to be your prayer chaplain. But before uh, sharing you uh, the prayer that I came up with, I wanted to share with you a little story about communication. Uh, a week, I, I wasn't here last week because for some reason my legs started swelling, the uh, water started dripping out of the bumps on them, and it was scars. It was very uncomfortable. And a, a wound specialist uh, uh, suggested that I use uh, Vaseline on them to help the skin be smoother and, and heal. So this morning before coming here, um, uh, my wife, Pat, said, uh, uh, would, would you like some more Vaseline? And I said, yes. And I said, uh, I would like more Vaseline on me. And her response was, I didn't hear it right, because instead of saying more Vaseline, I thought she said, moron. <laughs> I thought she was calling me a moron. <laughs> So communication is very important. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> this um, this prayer that I'm going to share with you, uh, it actually, uh, I wrote it a few weeks back, and I was really struggling at that time with what to say. I kept asking the Holy Spirit, what do I say? What do I? And nothing was coming. I started reading through all kinds of books I had and this and that. And I finally came up with this, but I was not totally satisfied with it. It just, and it took me um, almost a week after I originally wrote it and submitted it that it really got to me what it was I was saying and how happy. This prayer was making me. So, this is the prayer. I hope you enjoy it. I am grateful that whatever my new problem, wherever my need seems to be, however I may feeling, I am willing to uh, affirm I am one with God now. I am open to fresh perspectives and exploring my responses and my thinking. And if we could only do that, not do just the words, but get the feeling behind those, that's what started making me feel happy. As I'm changing my consciousness, the very building blocks in my cells shift, understanding this is my first step in the optimum change for my life. And again, I could, I could feel that. It was, it was, oh, it was awesome. Um, I remember I'm a spiritual be being, not just the words, I really am, living in a physical universe. I am greatly blessed to know that I can use my increasing spiritual awareness to spark new affirmative beginnings. And I just, I got so excited about the new beginnings. Now, creation is at hand, here and now, I relax in deep gratitude for knowing this truth. I am grateful that I feel at peace with a touch, a smile, a gesture, or a word of caring. I feel the compassion 
coming to me amen and I am not a moron <laughs> <laughs> But you do have more Vaseline. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Uh, if these words of prayer uh, resonate with your heart, please join me in praying them together. I'm just going to move this down here. There we go. Are we ready? Okay. O oh, great spirit of life and truth, we pray that our consciousness may be ever enlarged and widened, that we may comprehend love and unity in life. We are grateful for this blessing of togetherness and community with spirit. Here in the stillness, we, we make the, the pledge to be strong to accept whatever experience comes to us, knowing that it comes as an opportunity to expand and purify our vision. May we be true to our higher self, which has asked for light, and it is already so. And I, I actually would like to add to this because you know, we've been in this new retirement facility since March, and Pat and I have learned that whenever there's a change in our life, we say, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And so just the other day, um, Pat was talking to someone else at our dinner table about the fact that her son uh, has epilepsy. I don't, I don't know how it all started. Anyway, one of the, the, well, the servers came rushing out of the kitchen area and she said, my four-year-old son has epilepsy too. Uh, let's talk about it. And they did. And so we realized that we were there not for ourselves. We were for there for this mother and her little boy. And, you know, we hope to be there even more. So one never knows in life. Where, where you'll be, but accepting it all, going with it, and loving others is, is the way. Mm. Thank you so much, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. You know what's one of the most wonderful things about me serving this church is the uh, all the different forms of wisdom that come from all the different people. Um, and the wisdom uh, in knowing that fellowship is important to the church afterwards, the wisdom that people share with us when they share their prayers, the wisdom in people who just serve silently, not without asking for recognition. There's so much wisdom if we're just open to, to hearing it, seeing it. And I'm just so, I'm gr so very grateful for that. So uh, we're all a part of that. We are, we are this, this wonderful family, Unity in the Olympics. You know, so moving on to the daily word. Um, the daily word is balance. And this is literally today's, Sunday's daily word. Um, mm, I honor life's shifting rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> I honor life's shifting rhythms. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to read. With, with a, a lance, right? Oh, yes, or, yeah. Sometimes trying to balance my schedule, meet my obligations, and even find time for the things I enjoy can leave me scrambling to figure out how to fit it all in. Okay, that's my week encapsulated right there, okay? Today, I take my cue from nature and notice the rhythm of the seasons and the tides, the cycles of growth and the order that underlies all things. I appreciate how seamlessly the natural world balances itself and restores itself to harmony. We're certainly experiencing that right now in this change of seasons, right? The wind, the rain, um, it's all in the balance though. And boy, if we step back, we can learn that 
it's just going to continue around, right? This gift of harmony and balance lives in me. I'm just going to pause for a second because I just had this conversation um, with Danita, right? We were just talking right before the service about um, living in the desert where it's all sun or being here where you're, you're starting to feel like where was fall? It just, we went from, you know, summer. Um, and we're talking about, uh, she, she spent many years in New Mexico, right? Uh, before you came back here and um, how when you live in this, I, I live in Palm Springs, California, and it's all sun. There's not a lot of balance there. There's a lot of sun and not a lot of rain. Um, and sometimes um, this 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 kind of balance bring, brings us back into a, um, just a more peaceful place. So we're not all all on one side. So this gift of harmony and balance lives in me. I honor myself when I flow with it, instead of forcing my will upon it. I listen to my body's many signals. I rest when I'm tired. I eat when I'm hungry, and I socialize or seek solitude as I need to. As I care for myself, I find balance. I don't often quote the, uh, and, and with the biblical scripture, sometimes it applies, sometimes it distracts for me. Uh, this one, for there is nothing, this is from Ecclesiastes, for there is nothing better for people under the sun than to eat and drink and enjoy themselves. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 8.15. You know, that one I resonate with. <laughs> Um. <clears throat> so did you happen to get the uh, the newsletter this week? The God of your own understanding. One of the things that I've, I've been reading a lot of Eric Butterworth lately. Eric Butterworth um, is, was a unity minister. Eric Butterworth, his mother was a unity minister and Eric Butterworth was ordained in 1948. So that goes back a little while, right? Um, he served several churches, including in Pittsburgh. Um, in fact, uh, Judy, didn't your husband, Tom, study with him or serve under him at some point in Pittsburgh? And Eric Butterworth uh, then served many, many years in New York City at a big, big Unity Church in New York City. And he's written several books. So while not the founder of Unity, he's a, a, a significant voice, a significant voice in the formation of Unity uh, and the ongoing. And, and so I'm reading a, a book and I've actually ordered, it's, the book is called A Quest for Truth and it's seven chapters. It's, it's easy enough. Um, and, and we have maybe six of them here in our library. And I've gone ahead and ordered 11 more. And it's something that um, I'm going to spend a lot of time with this month. I'm going to start to spend a lot of time because one of the things that Eric Butterworth wrote about um, is our own personal journey toward the connectedness to God. And Eric Butterworth, and this his, the book I'm reading was written in 1965, and it's been updated or re republished throughout the 80s. Um, and I just, the new ones I have are, you know, nice and small, you know, little paperbacks. Um, and one of the things that struck me was he was writing about the church, the unity not be, by the way, I have the book right here. This is the... This is the, the hardback version that we have about six of, and then we've got some paperback versions too. But, um, hmm. One of the greatest challenges facing humankind today is the challenge to traditional religion to find a present day faith that corresponds with present day needs. That's written back in 1965, and we could imagine that present day in 65 isn't present day here, right? He also writes, unity is an ecumenical movement. It is not a program for uniting religious organizations into one ecclesiastical body, but a teaching movement. It's a teaching movement seeking to lead all people, regardless of organizational barriers or theological differences, to a new sense of spiritual unity with God and with one another. Now, I could sit here and quote from this book for the next hour, and I would actually love to do that, um, but we're just going to take little pieces of it over the next month, and perhaps we're going to use this as, a, as a, a study guide. Even if you have read it before, it's so good to come back to it again. So um, anyway, that's, um, I've been reading a lot of Eric Butterworth, and, and, and that's been helping to inform me on moments of my spiritual journey. And you know that 
one of the things that I like to share with you. I, I've told you many times, I am not a unity minister, right? Let's, I, let's, let's be all clear with that. I'm clear with that. I am not a unity minister, all right? I am ministering to you, and I'm sharing with you my journey. And the way that is, speaks to me the most is to be very, very self-examining, be very, very self-aware, and share my experiences throughout the week with you, share my journey with you. And, and um, so this song is a song I wrote this week. Um, and it, it comes from, as you saw, if you saw the newsletter article, the God of your own understanding. Reading the Butterworth book tells me it's okay for me to come here to this church, to unity. And it, I'm going to tell you, it wasn't okay for me to have the God of my understanding in the church that I grew up in. And a lot of, my, a lot of people that I know, it's not okay for them, according to their church or their society, to have a God of their own understanding. I'm here to tell you, you can have the God of your understanding right here, all right? Hmm. If I believe this, and I believe that, and mindlessly follow along, if I recite this, and if I recite that, they tell me that I can belong. But each path is different, each journey unique, and there's not just one way to the answers I seek. What's true for another cannot be denied But that doesn't make it my truth here inside There's a freedom inside as my heart opens wide And my consciousness keeps on expanding When I question my thoughts and the things I've been taught I find the God of my own understanding Down through the ages, the saints and the sages have told us just what to believe. And on rare occasion, a gentle persuasion can bring a new thought to perceive. But deep in my heart is my own unique truth. There's nothing to promise and nothing to prove. Like streams to the ocean, there's not just one way. And I can decide how I see God today. There's a freedom inside as our hearts open wide and our consciousness keeps on expanding. When we question our thoughts, and the things we've been taught we'll find the God of our own understanding. Maybe it's already working for you the way you've been taught in the past. Maybe the answers are certain and true to the questions you've already asked. But if there's a longing to know something more, to find an awareness you like never before. Just open your heart and walk through that door to make a fresh new start with the God that's in your heart. There's a freedom inside as our hearts open wide and our consciousness keeps on expanding oh, when we question our thoughts and the things we've been taught we'll find the God of our own understanding when my mind is unsealed and my truth is revealed I'll find the God of my own understanding and if you haven't by now you are hereby allowed to find the God of your own understanding.
All right, thank you uh, for going on that journey with me. Mm. So I'm going to shift gears and um, sort of, <laughs> sort of. So today, well, this week, I got stuck in the yuck. <laughs> stuck in the yuck. Okay, like the yuckiness. Okay. Um, as you know, I, I, I talk about that a good bit. I don't know if I'm more stuck in the yuck than other people, but there's always something, it seems like, that gets me stuck in the yuck. I've heard stories this morning about someone getting stuck in the yuck about uh, an HOA or, you know, something else, right? They're, they're just, we get stuck in the yuck. And, and my yuck lasted eh, a good two days. Now, usually my yuck lasts for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I've got these tools that I can use, positivity and a lot of, a lot of uh, spiritual tools, books that I turn to. My tools weren't working. My tools weren't working, my, my yuck. And quite honestly, my yuck this week was pretty inconsequential. Um, I had ordered some things that didn't come in on time. Oh, that makes me crazy, right? I'm like, who didn't do their job and why is my stuff not here, <laughs> right? So, but then I go deeper and I say, well, the yuck isn't about the stuff not being here. It's not about the books not arriving in time or my, I ordered a, a, a piano for my, a new piano for myself and it's a l l digital keyboard and it's not here and I really wanted it to be here. Um, and it's not here, and, but it's not about that. My yuck wasn't about these, really about these things. It was about me being upset about these things and not really being able. So swirl, swirl, swirl. You know, like we were supposed to get an hour of extra sleep last night, right? You know, I, I knew going into this, I'm like, no, it's not going to be an extra hour of sleep. It's going to be an extra hour of lying in my bed, tossing and turning with my mind reeling about all the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Like that, that was what I was envisioning. Um, I said to a friend, I said, I just can't, I can't seem to get out of this. I don't, I, I don't, my tools aren't working. What do I do? And my friend, she says, well, what I do is I go to a place of gratitude. I go to a place of being grateful for things and that that gives her a sense of peace. And I said, of course, right? This is, this is one of the tools. And look, we've heard it even, even before my world of unity, I remember being told, you know, count your blessings, right? And there's even songs written, count your blessings. So I did that. I went into this place of gratitude and it was really great for two and a half minutes. It didn't work for very long, right? It worked, but my, I got back in the yuck. I really was stuck in the yuck. And I realized that that, that, that tool for me at that moment was a Band-Aid. Um, I think uh, we, a lot of us understand the difference between Western um, traditional medicine and holistic medicine, right? And one treats the symptoms and one treats the source. For me in that moment, Listing my blessings, listing the thing I was grateful for was treating my symptoms. And then when I was done, the source was still there. The source of my yuck was still there. So it wasn't, so, so I needed to go deeper. It wasn't good enough. And I, cause I don't, I, it's, it, part of my journey is not accepting something because it said so. Not accepting something just because I read it somewhere or that it's been said over and that is that's just not for me it's not good enough because why because if i'm still getting to a point where i i i'm stuck in my yuck then it's not working so i go deeper so there's a um a daniel namod song that says get ready my soul i'm diving in so that's what i said this isn't working for me, not as much as I want it to, not as often as I want it, not always when I want it. So get ready. I'm going in. I'm going to rock the boat a little bit. I'm going to share with you my rocking of the boat. If it rocks your boat, I kind of hope it does. And if you are fine, like the song says, if you are absolutely fine with where you are, that is so amazing and I'm so happy for you. I'm not in that place. And, and, I, um, and so I share with you my journey. Um, the first thing I go to is the unity principle. I, I ask the question, first of all, I ask the question, if God is so good, why do I feel so bad? If God is so good, why do I feel so bad? I thought, you know what, this is gonna be my book title. 
Then I looked it up and saw that there was a book called If God is So Good, Why Do I Feel So Bad? So written back, you know, a couple decades ago. But if God is so good, why do I, why, why do I feel so bad? There's a different word in there. And the unity principle says God is everywhere and everything, and God is good. If God, this is the question, this is where I dive in. I'm going to ask the questions. If God is everything and everywhere, right? If God is omnipotent and omnipresent. Omnipotent means omnipotent. Omni means all. Potent means powerful, right? Um, we change the pronunciation. We say omnipotent, right? When we say omniscient, we mean omni, all, scient, knowledge. God knows all. Omnipresent, all, omni, right? Present everywhere. So these are the words and why we say them and what we mean by them. And if this is true... And then we also go on to say that God is all good, omnipotent. And if God is, if God is all good, it, but God is everywhere and God is everything, isn't God goodness and badness? This is the question that came to me. Because bad exists, right? At least to me, bad exists. Death of a loved one, especially out of chrono chronological order. It's bad. It doesn't feel good. Losing one's job, one's home, one's spouse. Bad. Ah, doesn't like it. People lying to us, people disappointing us, being rude, feeling depressed. These are bad things, right? Feeling anger or resentment. Or what about bad weather or bad restaurant service? The word bad, the concept, the feeling of bad does exist. So my question was, is if God is only goodness, well, what's this? Because if God is also everything, then what's this? Isn't God the badness part too? These are questions that I had to ask myself. I'd go deeper and deeper. Where is God in all of this? So is the problem, is the problem with my definition of God or the definition of God? Or is the problem with my definition of good and bad? Okay, walk with me, right? Let's go further. Let's keep asking the questions. Even if they're uncomfortable, right? First of all, what is God? Is it a being of force that is only God, good? And then what is good and what determines who is, what is good and what is bad? If I am a C Seattle Seahawks fan, then the results of last week's game are good. Do we have any Seattle Seahawks fans? All right, so last Sunday, right? The Se Seahawks won, right? That's a good thing. If I am a Los Angeles Chargers fan, the results of the exact same game are bad, right? By the way, I am neither. I don't really follow football. But <laughs> so there's those of us who all, it's neither good nor bad because it's neither one. But there are people who experience the exact same thing as good or bad, right? The elections are coming up on Tuesday, aren't they, in the midterms? Uh, but we're gonna, but we're gonna, but we're gonna. The elections are coming up on Tuesday, right? And fully half of this country, like we are sitting at 50%, it goes, some elections it's 48% to 52, and then the next time it's 52 to 48. But we pretty much sit in a place in our country where half of our country has this viewpoint and half has another. And then of course we know that there are middle people too, right? But when the elections come out, half of our country is going to be disappointed. It's gonna be a bad day. And half of our country, it's gonna be a very, very good day. Same result, right? But just different viewpoints on that. So again, I ask, what's good? What's bad? And who gets to determine? Someone told me this week how wonderful it is that we're finally getting rain here. I don't have that. <laughs> I don't share that feeling. I can tell you it's too rainy for me. It's too, it's cold and rainy and people say it's wonderful and that's good because for them it's, you know, the ground was dry and we need more rain and the wells are running dry and that's not my perception. I'm like, I'm cold. I'm wet. My van windows are leaking. I, uh, you know, so all of these things, they're good or they're bad based on our perceptions. God is not this being or this force that works sometimes and sometimes not. God is always at work, always at play. It's like the gasoline in your car doesn't really care whether you move forward or you move backward or you sit there and idle. The gasoline is the power, right? God is like gasoline that way. 
God doesn't care whether we're moving forward or backward. God doesn't have a preference of what is good or bad. God comes before good and bad. Think about that. Before, like, back, if good and bad are out here, this, this power exists before all of that. It's like a canvas of a painting. The canvas exists before the paint goes onto it. Whatever color shows up, you might like the color. Whatever style, you might like pointillism or you might like abstract art. But the canvas is there to hold any kind of art that shows up on it. And it's there to be blank as well. It's like my piano. You might like jazz. You might like new age music. The piano doesn't care. The piano doesn't care what I like or what you like. It's just going to play whatever I put on it, what I play on it, right? In fact, I would venture to say that some people don't even like piano. Some people are like, no, I don't like piano music. I like electric guitar. And so really music, if we step back and say music doesn't care, music just is. God doesn't care. God just is. It's God is before Preference. Preferences are human. What makes God good then? If we are saying God the good, what makes God good? Is it just the good things in our life? Is this what we think God is, is only the good things in our life? We all know the difference between good and bad. Animals know the difference between good and bad, right? Your dog knows when something's wrong, right? It knows when you're not doing well. Your cat probably knows. The deer know when the car comes toward them, I better get off the road. I, like, that's a weird thing for me, by the way, here, that there are deer like, on my sidewalk and in my front yard and everywhere I go, I'm like, you know, but they know, they get out of the way, like, oh, bad thing, car's coming, get out of the way, right? Um, skunks, right? They know when something's bad because they're going to let you know. <laughs> a snake, right? A rattlesnake. What's it do when something bad is happening? Right? It knows. Something's up. Anything that has fight or flight in it knows the difference between good or bad. A bear. There was a, a story, a news story. Of course, they're happening all the time. But there was a news story just the other day. This woman in Vermont, she let out her shih tzu. I love, I love that word, by the way. Well, I'll just say that, her shih tzu. Um, she let out her shih tzu on the front porch of her condo. She's not living out in the middle of nowhere. She's living in a condo. She opens the door. The shih tzu goes running out. And what does it do? It chases a bear cub up the tree. All right. Mama bear appears from nowhere and says, hey, woman, and attacks the woman, right? The woman, uh, uh, she, she lives. I wouldn't tell you the story if she didn't because she's no, I don't know. I just won't. Um, the woman lives, okay, because her partner, her her husband, her partner went out and screamed at the bear and beat the hair on the, the bear on the head, and the bear went away, and and then um, so they went back inside, and then they opened the door to call the Shih Tzu back in, <laughs> and as soon as they open the door, the bear comes charging back at them again, and they get the door closed. But the bear knows good from bad, right? The ba the bear is like, hey, don't mess with my cubs, I'm gonna attack you, so. We all know, animals know, that there is good from bad. So we don't have to, I, I don't think, my part of this journey is I don't have to apologize for knowing good from bad. Right? It's, it's, it's a part of what is there in our experience as humans and as animals. And if I want to think only positive thoughts, I'm putting a band-aid on it. I need to go deeper. I need to find the source. What is my suffering about? What am I not liking about this bad stuff? There are things that no, almost no way you spin it are, are un, un, unappealing. Um, it's bad when you can't pay the rent and you get an eviction notice, right? I thought so at one point in my life. It's bad when your mom sends you to school without lunch money because there isn't 75 cents to give you, right? I thought so. 
So did the speaker there. It's bad when a distracted driver crosses the center line and crashes into your dad's car, killing him. I thought so. We can't just wash over these things as if they didn't happen. But when we label them good or bad, even legitimately, when they are good or bad, we are the ones who suffer and we are the ones who are hurting. It doesn't make the event itself inherently bad. It means it was bad for me, the person who experienced it. This was the key for me. The event itself is not inherently bad. It's an event that happened in the world. It was bad for me. Crappy, I wanna use a different word. I wanna use the word, the shih tzu word. But only in my experience. I don't, I don't buy into God only creating good things. And I don't buy into God creating bad things. God just simply creates. We are the ones that label good or bad. And that is, that's our suffering. In Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve, we know this, right? We know the story of Adam and Eve. Anyone not know it, I'll refresh you. So there was this couple at the beginning of time, right? Adam and Eve, or some of us say Adam and Steve, but you know, it depends on how you look at things. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's as likely that Adam and Eve, you know, parented the entire world as it is as Adam and Steve did. They're both like, you know, far-fetched things, right? Adam and Eve. Okay, Adam and Eve, they're at the beginning of time in, in, our, in our biblical stories. And before, at, at the very beginning, they were in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is paradise, right? That is, everything is beautiful and lush and perfect. And I'm going to tell you that I take this story as a, a fable, as a, as a myth, of a, a teaching moment, right? I don't take this story literally, so I just want to be clear that I'm not taking this story literally, um, and I'm not presenting to you uh, as literally. I'm telling you as, 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 as a teaching story. And so they're in this paradise, right? They're in this, and then there's one rule. You have one thing to do. One rule is don't tick, to pick the apple off of what? the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of knowledge of good and bad. Knowing, if you eat, if you take something from the knowledge of good and bad, what happened to them? Once they knew the difference between good and bad, they were cast forever, forever from paradise. They would no longer ever experience true peace. It's this one I'm telling you is in the very first book of the Bible. And that's not a book that I spend a lot of time. I have spent a lot of time with it, but it's not a book that I spend a lot of time with these days. But that story right there tells me so much. It's the knowledge of, be, uh, of good and evil. It's the knowledge. So God existed. Paradise exists on this side, the backside of good and evil, right? Before it even happened. And it's our knowledge as humans that caused us suffering. There's a great Indian philosopher and spiritual teacher who traveled the world for 50 years, um, teaching, sharing his, his knowledge, um, even though his knowledge was, it's hard to put into words, uh, but he did his best as he traveled around and for 50 years. And people would follow him for 20 and 30 years, and they were still seeking, what is his message? What is the secret to life? And one day he says, I'm going to share with you the secret. I'm going to share with you my secret to understanding. People are getting quiet. Everyone's just really ready for this moment. Wow, it's been all these decades, and here he is going to share this moment. He said, this is my secret. I don't mind what happens. I don't mind what happens. Whew. Okay, so my truth is, I mind a lot of things. <laughs> like, I mind that my piano isn't here right now. I mind that the books didn't show up. I mind that someone took my parking place. I mind that it's raining and that my fingers are cold right now. I mind that my mouth is dry and I want water. I mind so much, 
It's monkey mind. I mind all those other things that I told you until I didn't mind them anymore. That is truly for me a key. I don't mind what happens. And I take that back to God doesn't mind what happens. God is before, we mind, we care, we have, we mind what happens because we have a preference, because we have expectation. Someone tells me I'm giving you chocolate cake and then, oh no, no, let me make this even more clear. I went to the grocery store and I said I'm going to get, oh look, a pumpkin, a pumpkin roll. I love pumpkin pie and pumpkin, you know. But no, it wasn't a pumpkin roll. It was basically a ginger spice roll colored orange and called pumpkin roll, right? We have, uh, you're so sweet, thank you. I've got a, thank you. I'm, I've got one right here. Oh, wow, thank you. That means I will take a minute to swig it. Thank you. <laughs> because I had an expectation. You told me that this was a pumpkin roll and what you gave me was a ginger spice roll. I mind, right? I, I expect expectations. Um, you know, they set me off a little bit, and, and I joke about them, although some of my friends know that, uh, you know, I can be, hmm, well, I, I will let them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, true peace is the absence of good and bad. This is, I don't mind what happens. If I could get to that place, that's where true peace is. I don't mind what happens. True peace, this was my big thing this week, is true peace is the absence of good or bad. True peace isn't only good. True peace isn't a beautiful meadow with the trees blowing lovely and the, the sun is there. That's, that is not true peace because then there's also the possibility that bad might exist, right? All of a sudden, a cloud might come in, it might start raining on me, or a bear might jump out at me because it thinks I'm chasing its cub with my shih tzu. <laughs> true peace is the absence of good and bad, and true, and to me, God, God, that, that beginning thing, that force that's before, that's before humans is the absence of good and bad. That's the paradise that is in Genesis before we knew what good or bad was. I invite you to explore that this week. I feel like if I ever get to that point, like I don't know what would happen. I don't think I will, ever will get to the point where nothing matters to me or I don't mind what happens. There's a difference, by the way, right? I'm not saying that nothing matters to me, because things matter, and that's important. But I don't mind what happens to me. I, that's, that's my goal. I want to get to that place. Maybe it will take 50 years of teaching around the world to get to that place. I don't know. That is my, that is the God of my understanding. That God that's before good and bad so that I can not mind what happens. That's how I want to connect with, with God. It's the one that I choose to align with and how I want to get unstuck from my yuck. So I go back to what I told you. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready. Get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or won, everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here. To this present moment here To a new beginning here And I'm seeing life so clearly now Get ready, my soul 
I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love and the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Cause here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before And here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source Yes, here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before And here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source. Get ready, soul. We're diving in. Get ready, all you souls. We're diving in. To the deepest kind of love And the sweetest kind of life Get ready, get ready Get ready, I'm ready Get ready, are you ready? My soul for that beautiful message and to remind us as being human <laughs> we still have access to the higher self to the awakening self mm. that is in a beautiful place yeah. thank you okay turn my page here mm -hmm. i know where i'm at <laughs> oh and now we move our love and gratitude forward by sharing our tithes and our offerings, this wonderful energy that we have, that we've held in our hands and thought about and, and infused with love. And as we pass them on to us, uh, to this ministry, it also brings that beautiful energy to us. If your heart has been fed here today, unity in the Olympics gratefully receives all that comes through you. Mm. For those of you joining us online, we also accept love offerings on our website at www.unityintheolympics.org. Also, if you have a written prayer request, please hand it in, and it will be confidentially held in the prayer box and prayed over for 30 days, then sent to the Worldwide Unity Prayer Ministry at Silent Unity to be held in collective prayer for another 30 days. And now, held in your hands or in your hearts, let us bless our gifts as we move them forward into the oneness, saying, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I give in love. This is a new abundance song that I wrote this week. I'll sing it for you a time or two.
Blessings come to me, abundance flows through me, I'm grateful for all I receive. When I give from inside, it comes back multiplied, it is so just as I believe. I am grateful for all I receive. Blessings come to me, abundance flows through me, I'm grateful for all I receive. When I give from inside, it comes back multiplied, it is so just as I believe. I am grateful for all I receive. Try it with me. Blessings come to me, abundance flows through me, I'm grateful for all I receive. When I give from inside, it comes back multiplied, it is so just as I believe. I am grateful for all I receive. Blessings come to me, abundance flows through me, I'm grateful for all I receive. When I give from inside, it comes back multiplied, it is so just as I believe. I am grateful for all I receive. Thank you for BA. Um, we have our blessings too. We bless, uh, we bless these highs because we know the good that it will do for our church and our community in sharing them uh, to the, the community and the world. So we are blessed from these times. And we're also blessed by these prayers because we know in unity even before we fill out a prayer slip that God already knows what our needs are already has a solution awaiting us and so the, the, the piece of paper just triggers this process that's already been going on and we can be confident of it so we do save these prayers for 30 days and pray over them and then we will be sending them on to unity so in both cases we have so much to be grateful for thank you hmm. wow thank you all thank you you good mm. Mm. Um, so it is time for announcements, right? Announcements. So today is Sunday, which means tomorrow is Monday, which means we have Monday mid <laughs> Monday midday meditation, right? Yeah. One of those uh, missing fingers you know, just slipped, right? It's the, the ones that weren't missing are the ones that slipped. <laughs> um, yes, Monday midday meditation at noon with Reverend Donna and Fair Chaplain Sandra Blanchard and Tim West. So um, you'll receive the Zoom link by mail to, uh, email tomorrow. And if you aren't receiving that and you would like to, please see me or any, any well, so many of us, you know, just say, hey, someone, I need to get uh, my email on this. All right. Um, okay, so next up. Oh, yeah, so this was... Um, this came in the mail, or no, I don't know where it came from. It was just on the table this week, all right? Um, this is a wonderful opportunity this afternoon at 2 p.m. at Holy Trinity Lutheran. And th this is a scholarship benefit concert for benefiting high school kids who are choosing music as their path forward. All right, so it's a $20 donation at the door today. It's at Holy Trinity Lutheran. Um, and some of the people who are performing, um, there's Linda Dowdell and Craig Bueller, a jazz pianist and a saxophone. Uh, saxophone, so you've got some jazz going on there. Marlene Moore and Jesse Amon, who are cellists. So there'll be a couple cellists there as well. There's Dawn Martin, a classical pianist. She will be performing. Um, there's a singer and pianist, uh, Vicki Helwick and Mark Johnson. And there's also the Jimmy Hoffman Band that I'm not really sure, but they look like they might be country. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, so that's like that's all happening today. All those different styles of music. So, sort of whatever your preference is or isn't, it's going to be there. Um, but what a wonderful cause, right? I mean, hi, like you know, high school kids going into music. It's a kind of a tough thing anyway, right? It's, you know, it's not. Um, so, if you find that you don't have anything to do today after you've eaten delicious soup, um, then there you go. And speaking of soup, how's that for a segue? Ha ha! Soup is on, right? Um, food and fellowship immediately following the service. Um, we gather every Sunday after the service uh, to share love and laughs and to expand our love for each other um, and to talk about what just went on over the last hour and 10 minutes or something like that. Um, so um, join in the fellowship. This week we have a couple different things of soup back there. One is vegetarian cream of broccoli. And Melinda, you brought butternut carrot ginger soup. <sighs> Yeah, and, and usually there's like warm rolls too, right? Uh, I mean, uh, sorry. <clears throat> right. So that is um, happening afterwards. It's a, what a wonderful part of our family is, is sharing back there. You know, we're in this energy here, but we also create another beautiful energy back there. So um, join us for that. Um, also new this week around that is um, that we, all, we now have a... a a, a love offering bowl out there. You do not have to put a single dime in there. Do not think for a second that you need to put money in to have some food and fellowship. That is not a thing. And if you feel like you want to put a th something in there for love offering that helps to offset the cost for, for people who are bringing stuff in, um, that's also fine too. So completely, it's, it's not in any way a, re a requisite. It literally is uh, a, a love offering. And there's a crystal bowl out there, not a ball, crystal ball, but a crystal bowl out there on the table. So have at that, all right? Are there any announcements that I'm missing about this week? No? Okay, then. Now it's time to gather together in our circle of one, our circle of love, for blessings to share and requests for prayer. Blessings to share and requests for prayer. We remember and we know that our requests for prayer and our blessings are all held with the most positive light. We all know that we don't share these things for pity. We don't share our thoughts and our prayers for pity or for drama. We share these things to lift up the person who, who puts out that prayer request. So we'll start this morning with blessings to share. If anyone has something, please speak up and, and, and share it with the group. What blessings do you have to share with the group this week? Mm. Mm, so grateful for that. Yeah. We have gratitude for that. And I always gratitude for like, whoever's coming to fix my tent. Mm-hmm. Our roof in a lot of pain, and yeah. so we couldn't understand. We haven't been able to sleep, so we look after the care of the house. Thank you. Mm. What I'd like to share is that the first platform of worship after the sanctuary here was built was our very own. Ah. Ah. We're honored with your presence every day here, Jerry. Mm, wonderful blessing. Grateful to have you here, Kasava. Mm. 
Any prayer requests? We hold them up. <laughs> I don't mind what happens. <laughs> Holding these blessings and prayers in our collective thoughts, let's affirm God's constant presence in our lives with our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The presence of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. The health of God flows through us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Have a wonderful day spreading love all around. Have a wonderful day spreading love all around. Have a wonderful day just to sing in this song. And why stop there singing all week long? Have a wonderful day spreading love all around. Now go spread those hugs. Have a wonderful day spreading hugs all around. Have a wonderful day spreading hugs all around. Have a wonderful day just singing this song. And why stop there singing all week long? Have a wonderful day spreading hugs all around. Have a wonderful day spreading love all around. Have a wonderful day spreading love all around.